Hello there ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mildra, and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. Let's talk about rule hacks, specifically taking the crunch from one system and converting it into another. Typically this is the domain of fans who convert a system or setting from one to the other, for example the numerous conversions that Savage Worlds and Powered by the Apocalypse have. In rare cases a book will dole out advice for such conversions, such as Anima. However, it's very rare that either will be done officially. This is typically because most companies have one system they rely on, and any others are too self-contained to allow such a thing. Additionally, having multiple rule sets for a similar game can easily lead to confusion. But to quote Sturgeon's revelation, not everything is always so. Which brings us to today's subject, Shadowrun Anarchy. An alternative rule set using the Q system found in Valiant Universe and Cosmic Patrol. It's been described as Shadowrun Light. And while Shadowrun is no stranger to such hacks, rarely are they official. I distinctly remember one using Powered by the Apocalypse. Is this one worthy to stand on its own? Or is it just a casualized version for those coming in from the video games? Let's find out. A quick note before we delve into this. I'll be using the term Shadowrun Core to refer to the base Shadowrun games, and 5th edition especially. This is for the purpose of brevity. Catalyst has a team of damn good artists, and Anarchy is no exception. If you're familiar with the formatting of Shadowrun 4th and 5th edition, you're going to see some similar ground here. Splash pages, in-character writing, Seattle setting, short stories bridging characters, well, only one in this case, but still. That said, some of the artwork is reused from other books. I don't mind it as much here, since we're dealing with a game that's got 20 plus years worth of art to invoke. Fortunately, it's not reusing the same images twice, unlike, say, Saga Edition from Star Wars. Also, I like how Anarchy references its main themes by being far more brief than 5th edition. I'm not without my nitpicks, though. I don't particularly care for how the chapters are ordered, namely with character creation coming after explaining skills, amps, and so on. I'd rather character creation be one of the primary chapters in a given book, especially a core book. But that's my own nitpicking at work. While Anarchy uses the Q system, character creation is relatively familiar to core Shadowrun. So in this particular example, we'll be going with an elven adept who goes by Fox. Why? Because I like adepts, that's why. For step one, we need to establish the character's theme. We've already got a head start on that with the elven adept concept, so we'll move on from there. In step two, we need to determine the level of the game. Essentially, the amount of experience that this Shadowrunner has. Or tier, if you prefer. We'll assume that Fox has been in a few scuffles in his tenure, and thus go with Street Runner. This is going to determine the starting pool of resources and points we can use. We'll get into those as we go through each step. The third step is determining a meta type, the closest thing the Shadowrun has to race, as elves, dwarves, etc. aren't full on separate races in the traditional sense. Fox is an elf, which grants him plus one to agility and charisma, so they start at two instead of the one. Fourth, we need to determine if the character is awakened or emerged. This will determine what abilities are available. Emerged characters are those who are able to access the Matrix with nothing but their mind, also known as Technomancers. Awakened characters are those able to use mana, either by casting spells as a mage, communing with spirits as a shaman, or enhancing the body as an adept. Obviously, you have to pick one or the other. You can't be both. Fox is an adept, as we established earlier, and thus he is awakened, which means we have two less points for Shadow Amps, but we'll get into that later. Fifth is Attributes, each of which starts at one, before adding in meta-type bonuses, as I mentioned before. We have 16 points to distribute while taking into account the attribute maximums for the meta type. Distributing this, we have the following attributes. Strength 5, Agility 5, Willpower 7, Logic 3, and Charisma 4. With these, we can determine the state of physical and stun damage tracks, which are calculated by adding 8 and half of either Strength or Willpower, respectively. Thus, Fox's physical track is 11 and his stun track is 12. Sixth is the assignment of skill points, and each skill can't have more than 5 points assigned to it. It's also advised to take at least one knowledge skills. Knowledge skills aren't rolled, but they may add to role-playing aspects. And taking this into account, his skill layout as follows. Athletics 2, Firearms 2, Close Combat 3, Negotiation 2, Stealth 2, and Knowledge of Local Folklore. Seventh is Shadow Amps. These are a catch-all for the abilities, enhancements, and equipment available. As an adept, only adept powers are what is pertinent here. We can choose from the list provided, or create one of our own. Either way, we can have no more than 6 amps. Fox has 10 points to spend on amps, and any unspent points are added to edge. In our case, we'll be going with 1 in wall running, 2 in strength boost 1, 2 in light body, and 3 in improved reflexes 2. The remaining 2 points are added to edge, which makes our edge 3. Eighth is qualities. 
Unlike the min-max affair of Shadowrun Core, in Anarchy you choose two positive qualities and one negative quality. Now in Fox's case, the positive qualities will be Cat-like and Silver Tongue, and Sinner, National, for the negative. Step 9 concerns Armor. Now base armor is 9, while armor 12 costs 1 skill point, and 6 armor adds a skill point. Fox has some armor, but is not heavily equipped to take hits, and thus is armed with a single vest at 9 armor. Step 10 concerns weapons, and while the weapon list is a shorter version of the one found in Shredder 1 Core, Fox has one melee weapon and one ranged weapon. As someone who prefers being able to switch between melee and ranged combat easily, he opts for a Vibra Sword and an Ares Predator V. Step 11 concerns gear, the miscellaneous equipment and allies they can call upon. Fox has access to four items and two contacts. Item-wise, we'll go with the Comlink, two flash grenades, and a pair of enhanced vision goggles. As for contacts, we'll go with his mentor Black Eye and a local Lone Star Cop named Jack Vangelis III. A bit wordy, but it runs in the family. The final step concerns cues and dispositions. These are general tags that might inform your character's personality or actions. The dispositions and cues don't have any real rules, just suggestions. The ones I picked here, as shown on the character sheet, focus on the notion of Fox being a stealthy double talker. Overall, character creation does its job fine. For veterans of Shadowrun Core, it's not exactly going to have the level of flexibility you might be used to. This is a narrative creation method through and through, although some of the restrictions have me scratching my head. Uh, yes, Shadowrun Core can get crazy with skills, but limiting it to 6 is... odd. Furthermore, archetypes like the weapon specialist might be a little harder to pull off here. It's a net positive to what it wants to be, but I'd advise taking it on its own terms. Much like Shadowrun Core, Anarchy uses a d6 dice pool. However, the Q system alters some parts to it. When making a test, you roll a number of die equal to attribute plus skill, treating any 5 or 6 as a hit. This is rolled as an opposed test from another person or the GM. There's no static difficulties. As in Core, Edge is treated as an extra effort pool. In Anarchy's case, you can spend a point of Edge to add an extra die and treat 4s as hits. Furthermore, you can also spend a point of Edge after you roll to re-roll the die. In either case, you don't regain edge until the start of the next session. Plot points are a kind of extra effort that is exclusive to the Q system. Players start with three plot points each, and the GM starts with one. While players are awarded points by the GM's discretion, no player can have more than five. GMs, on the other hand, gain a plot point when the players spend one. These can be used to add a glitch die to a roll, do an interrupt, move twice, heal, or counterattack when hit. Personally, I'm not entirely sure why this wasn't integrated with edge, but that's just me. Glitches work a little differently in this case. Instead of being based on the number of ones on a dice, as in core, when a test has a glitch die added, you add one extra die to the test that doesn't count as a success. If this die rolls a one, a glitch occurs, and if it rolls a five or six, an exploit occurs. In either case, an extra positive or negative effect happens with the resulting roll, even if you succeed. It's as if luck worked against you or in your favor in one form or another, respectively. While the core dice system is solid, the fact that a lot of effects are merely dice modifiers, especially the shadow amps, gives me a small bit of pause. Most notably in this is the case of spells and the lack of consequences mechanically, as compared to Shadowrun Core. I get that Anarchy is supposed to be more narrativist, but I could see this as being something that encourages certain archetypes over others, and I'm not exactly cool with that. In most cases, grading a game is a simple affair. Shadowrun's Anarchy as an alternate rule set means I can't necessarily review it and grade it in the same straightforward style that I have in previous cases. I'll start with what's on the page. It's a fine summation of Shadowrun's style of cyberpunk that's tailor-made for narrativist playgroups. In fact, the best way to look at it is Shadowrun Basic, with Shadowrun Core being the advanced version, a la D&D Basic and D&D Advanced. That's really where it belongs, a companion to the core rules for a specific audience. As such, while I give it a stamp of playable, how much you get out of it is going to depend on you and your group. If you're a veteran of Core, I would advise not getting it. However, if you got into Shadowrun through the video games by harebrained schemes, or if you prefer a game that's light on crunch, then Anarchy is definitely for you. In the end, Shadowrun is a game that demands a specific type of player, and Anarchy is no exception. Perhaps interest in the style of play will change with the upcoming Cyberpunk 2077 video game, but only time will tell how the dice fall there.